Hey, you guys. Hope you are doing well. So I woke up today actually with a very strong desire to share a specific testimony. And so I'm not really sure who this is tailored to or who needs to hear something like this, but it is actually about my relationship with an organization before Christ that was like a cult. And actually I got saved while I was in this organization and I was actually subsequently, uh, the Lord saved me out of it. And I've definitely seen parallels in terms of churches who can have similar methodologies and approaches. So perhaps there's some overlap with what I'm going to say here for that. But uh, I'm going to start with prayer because I think this is a difficult subject in general to think about if this is an experience you've had. So if you are someone who's coming out of that type of space, please know that um, there's going to be a lot of feelings that come with that. So I'm going to start. Lord, I thank you for prompting me to share this testimony and for any type of encouragement that will come upon the person who needs to hear this. I pray that there would be illumination. I pray that there would be the capacity to make a decision that would be honoring of you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. So this organization that I got connected to actually came through my mom. She was doing a personal development course and she had invited me and I signed up for it. I did the course and it was actually, I got this is again pre Christ. I actually got a lot of things out of it in terms of like personal healing. And I became very connected to the organization after. So I took a lot more of their courses. I became very connected in their community. Um, I would say that to some degree, I experienced success in it because I did start to volunteer. And soon after I started kind of moving up the ranks <laughs> in this and to the point where I was actually supervising people within it. And, I, and we were supervising their programming and it was a very strenuous program. Um, so I guess I from the standpoint of like, I, there were things I did actually personally develop out of it. So I got the sense that I was part of a community at a certain point, um, which was kind of needed at a certain point because I was coming out of addiction. I was still kind of like, if you hear my testimony, you'll hear that I still was, you know, still smoking and things like that. But a lot of the hard stuff I wasn't trying to kind of stay away from. So this gave me something like to do that was more functional, in my opinion, at the time. And um, they trained me in how to supervise people. They trained me in how to communicate very directly about things. So to this day, I would say I am, I still have some like remnant of they trained communication, um, like so to be very direct, to be able to listen in particular ways. I used to coach people. So there were like, components to it that were strong and positive but there was a very dark side to it that I wasn't always aware of or paying attention to and when I got into kind of um personal struggles and difficulties oftentimes it felt like I wasn't allowed to leave I felt like there wasn't always proper support um there was a lot of manipulation that happened that I think I was kind of ignorant about in many ways. And a lot of the manipulation would happen in terms of like people who were higher than you, um, people who, um, so like there would be principles that were positive, but they would twist it and they would do it in a way to inflict harm or force. Um, so there's coercion that was involved in that. And at a certain point, I started feeling 
um, like a tug. This is the time where I started to come into a, um, a, like the knowledge that like I needed God in my life. And I started seeking him out and I was still actively involved in this, um, in this program, this organization. And when I got to, um, like the actual piece of being baptized, coming into a relationship with Christ, I started to feel like this incongruence. Like I I wasn't, something started to feel really off to me about it, which not to say that it never felt off at certain points, but I started to feel like this relationship with God that I was developing was very clearly pulling me away from this. And so a really interesting experience that I had that made me very aware of it, which maybe some people are not going to believe me and that's okay because it is kind of a supernatural experience that I had, which was I was on actually a prep phone call for a program I was overseeing. And because this was an organization that was international, some of the coaches would be in the States. So I was, I was listening to a coaching call and I was actually at the gym. I was working out and listening to this prep call. And suddenly I started experiencing like difficulty hearing the line, like almost like the line was fading and it kept like going in and out, which was strange because it's a, it was a phone call. It was not like I was accessing zoom, but I was on a phone call. So it's very uncommon for me that I would experience that on a phone call, maybe on an app, but, um, or maybe it was zoom, but it started kind of cutting in and out. And I, um, at a certain point I heard the Lord say idol worship. I had no idea what that meant. I was like, okay. I kind of ignored it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? And it, the call kept cutting in and out. And I heard it again, like idol worship. And, and then he, I realized like he spoke to me, like, you need to leave this. This is not, we can't continue here. And I kind of, again, <laughs> try to ignore this prompting but it definitely did not go away and they were not like most cults they don't just like let you leave it's not just like okay take care best wishes for you there's like there's power dynamics there is processes there's people who have to scrutinize what you're saying um there is questioning and so i went through a lot of questioning from a lot of different people in different meetings um and it was like they were sending everybody to me like they were sending people even people who were in the program who were identified christians and sending them to me telling me you you can stay this is not idol worship and i still want you to be advised i have no idea what idol worship meant at this time I don't know what it is. I I uh I'm just saying it cuz I heard him say it and it somehow had power <laughs> in this in this interaction. And the one of the calls that I was on like one of the final calls that I was on I said this is idol worship and very funny enough a friend of mine at the time who was in this call uh someone who was a transgender person, but had grown up in the church actually said, I know what she's talking about and you need to let her go. And this person had always been very like close to my heart. Um, when I was in this program, like mentored me a lot in a lot of ways. So when they helped kind of push me out, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very ironic now because after I got out and I like learned more about what this was and even like they had tried to set me up with the, um, the manager, like the highest level person to speak to. And she actually, from the communication she received from other people, they discharged me. So I, I want to be clear. I went on through a lot of meetings and I remember saying to the Lord very clearly, like, they're not just going to let me leave. And he very lovingly removed me from that so and then it's ex very explicitly stated do not speak to anybody anymore walk away 
completely. And I had to sever every single relationship that I had built over the course of like four years, maybe three to four years, maybe more. I'm somewhere in there. And it was extremely difficult, extremely hard. But he very clearly stated to me, like, when you build a new building, you don't use old bricks. And so it's a word for someone. You don't, you don't need these old bricks from your, your previous life. The Lord will create newly with you. And um, and I guess like some things that I probably want to emphasize in this experience, like now in retrospect, like thinking about it, because there are some parallels at times that you'll see with churches where they have very um, strict structures that are intended that they are the decision makers of your life. <laughs> and like you report everything to them, things have to constantly be approved. And I'm not like, again, I want to be very distinct that like submission in a, in a leadership capacity with church is very like normal. Um, but there are also boundaries around what that in fact can look like. And so, and so like an example for me, that was obviously, you know, like now I can reflect back was like, they made decisions about my health. There was a time where I actually had to access a hospital and they told me, if you go to the hospital, we are going to suspend you. And so it was like a decision I had to make that like, do I take care of my health or do I take care of my responsibilities with this organization? And that was a lot of the different, I know that sounds very heavy. Um, there were a lot of difficult positions that they put me in as a product of them wanting control over my life, my relationships, the way I did things. I had to do daily, not daily, sorry, weekly reports about me and my life and my behavior. Um, part of this was accountability for the organizational structure that I was a part of as a supervisor. But like now in retrospect, I can see like this is highly invasive as well um, and was with the intention also maintain levels of control in my life. And I see that sometimes within church structures is that there is a lot of communication that goes upwards. They have a lot of direct influence over the decisions that you make. And part of it can be kind of manipulative. Right. Like, so at the end of the day, the, the like the position of leadership within a church is with the intention to equip the saints, right? To prepare them for every good work. So the intention is not to control your life. The intention is not to create idol worship within the church, which interestingly, I did end up getting into a church that had components of that really strongly. And it only took time after I left for me to kind of see that there were elements of their behavior that mimicked this organization included like the clothing they wanted me to wear. It included um, the way I communicated at time. Like there were a lot of rules within this particular church that I attended and even like the pastor kind of having this very um, nobody can question him kind of position. And even if it was biblical. So I, I've started to kind of see too that the this experience, though, was very confusing at times and very difficult to kind of come out of. I would say that like now I'm starting to become more aware of how some churches are actually emulating this type of framework. And like in terms of like leaving, it's a, like a lengthy procedure as if you're asking for approval. The church that I, the one I'm referencing that I did eventually end up leaving when I made the decision and I wrote the pastor a letter. I like at this point, I'd, ask, I'd said a few times like I wanted to leave and he would fight with me about it. And finally, I, when I sent him this letter, I said to him, I am not asking you, I am telling you. And that's when he finally agreed. But at this point, I had also unknowingly entered into a space where there was a, ch so there were still positive things again that came from the church itself, but they were overstepping a lot into the boundaries over like what they are responsible for within my life. 
And the fact is, is that yes, there like there's a balance between the church holding you accountable about sin and about, you know, family and, and loving and caring for one another. Right. But oftentimes that that's not exactly how it looks. It's not really like we're doing it out of the space of like being family and like, we love you and we're taking care of you. Oftentimes when those structures emulate kind of cultish behavior the intention is to create idolatry about the leader number one so when you have leaders that are highly exalted nobody can question them like you it's almost like what happens is they become thank you lord it becomes synonymous with god okay so it's like the 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 leader and the lord are the same and they're not does it mean the lord doesn't speak to the leader no he does but your relationship with the pastor is not the Lord. Okay. There is no human being. Oh my gosh. I need to say this. There is no human being who is synonymous with the Lord. None. Zero. Nobody. The Pope? No. The, the pastor? No. The apostle? No. The prophet? No. They are not the Lord. We are human beings. We have functions. We have purposes that the Lord would give us. And again, purpose as in the purpose of God for this person, not my purpose, not a secular purpose, okay? They, this person is never going to be synonymous with the Lord. And that is what is creeping into the church is we are creating leaders and we are saying God. And that is not true. That is not true. Doesn't mean that you have to be defiant and disobedient with your leaders. But at the end of the day, we are all, all of us have fallen short of the glory of the Lord. Our righteousness, our, our work story are like filthy rags before him. Just because God has elevated a human being does not mean that they're ever going to hold the singular authority of the Lord. Even if you leave every single person in the church, even if you walk away from the church, you did not leave God. God did not leave you. Okay? They're not the same. They do not work as one tandem object. And Sometimes what we think is because the leader speaks or the Lord gives them utterances because they, they have giftings, right? And, th and this is like they're given, people who are in leadership are given for the equipping of the saints. So yes, the Lord speaks through them. And again, and am I advising defiant behavior? No. But just because something happens with a pastor, just because something happens with a leader or or a, a member in the church does not mean you've lost the Lord. It does not mean that God always approves of what is happening within the body. And sometimes it can be so, um, so hard to see because the person is operating in the gift. And we become fooled into thinking that if I ever question this human being, Based on legitimate standards, I'm not just saying like for any reason, I don't like your haircut. I don't like the way you speak. I didn't like the psalm that we picked. Like, I'm not talking about that, but I'm saying you have legitimate concerns. There are behaviors that they are doing that are in opposition to the Lord. You see sin. You see them exalting themselves and being prideful. Um, Not like when you start to see these signs, these warning signs, okay? A leader in the church is a servant. Christ came as a servant not as someone who is there to exalt himself the father exalted jesus after he died on the cross he fulfilled what he had to do he was exalted at this point at the right hand of the father now there is no name that we profess that holds any other power than the name of Jesus. But what we need to understand is that when you are in churches and you see people who are creating idol worship to pastors, be careful. This is not of the Lord. The Lord does not want you to worship your pastor. The Lord does not want you to glorify your pastor. The glory belongs to him. The worship belongs to him. Anything that comes out of a human being that demonstrates the goodness of the Lord goes back up to him. Okay? This is this is literally 
like one of the, the, the greatest issues that we are seeing in the church today is pastors who want to be gods, prophets who want to be gods, apostles who want to be gods, and they are creating cults. They are creating something that is not like the church, not designed the way the church was designed. And I'm not saying that there's this incredibly strict and formulaic model that it has to look like. But you see constantly in the in the apostles' accounts, I am just a man. I am just a man. I am just, don't worship me. Paul, uh, was it Paul? Um, planted or Apollos planted, Paul watered, sorry, one of the two, but God gave the increase. At the end of the day, they recognize that even in their capacity to, to provide things, it is still in God's hands. What kind of increase occurs from that? So why am I saying this is because there are a lot of churches that are creating this. So just beware, just be aware that when you see this, um, hyper charismatic behavior, almost like they're this like star, this personality, like, woo, (laughs) so flashy and interesting to watch. And you see them puffed up all the time. So puffed up, so arrogant when they speak. This is not of God. Anyways, I hope this is an encouragement to whoever this was designed for, whether it be one person, whether it be multiple people. This was a very difficult experience to come out of personally. It was very confusing leaving. And I've seen churches emulate this. I have seen myself walk away from a church and lost everybody because you get shunned when you leave a space that is a cult or anything that is cult. Like they will shun you. They will turn from you. They won't talk to you. That's that's the behavior is because if you are not with us, you're against us. OK, that's the mentality. Anyways, bless you. Thank you so much for listening, taking the time out of your day or night to be here with me. I wish you all the best blessings. Take care, guys. Bye.